they're going to be used for a while. Mm. Let's use them well. Let's appreciate that that the people that work in the coal mines in West Virginia are mm -hmm. good people. Mm -hmm. But let's also empower them and empower our students to realize that it's not binary. It's not mm -hmm. black or white, and mm -hmm. that there are really subtle things we yeah. need to tease out. Yeah. Um, you ready to take a walk? Yeah, let's do okay. it. Let's do it. All right, we're going to walk around the Willow School, and uh, <clears throat> let's do this. Here we go. So this is. Where are we? <clears throat> we're right in the center of the campus. Center of the campus. Yes. We're in Gladstone, New Jersey. Gladstone, New Jersey. Yeah. All right. So this building right here was built in 2002. It was the first lead gold school building in the country. And it is our kindergarten through fifth grade classroom. There's six classrooms in there. Uh, many people back in the day of 2003 considered this to be one of the greenest buildings in the country. Okay. Uh, this building over here was built in 2007. We call it the barn because it sort of looks like a barn. And it was, uh, again, built in 07. It was the first lead platinum building in New Jersey, uh, probably the, I think, 16th or 17th in the, in the country. Very, very efficient. If you take this building and compare it to a building built to the building code, this building requires 70% less energy to run and 60% less water. <laughs> and then if you turn completely around, this building right over here is our Health, Wellness, and Nutrition Center, a 20,000 okay. square foot building that just became certified uh, through the Living Building Challenge. And the Living Building Challenge really challenges you to make a building act like a tree, oh. to act like an organism. So it actually participates with its ecosystem and actually makes its ecosystem, our community, healthier because it's there. And, and it makes its place healthier. And uh, by place, yeah. I talk about people, you know, the ecosystem, the, the water, the mm -hmm. trees, the everything so right. that's that's the purpose of a building just like the purpose of a bird's nest right right it, it's gonna degenerate and, <clears throat> and and be part of the soil eventually and so these, these this building this building has no electric bill it's uh, you can see the roof has uh, all solar panels on it mm -hmm. that big tank is where we collect the water from the uh, from the roof and use it to flush the toilets it's made of completely recycled and salvaged materials and every one of the materials, every nut, bolt, and screw has been through the Living Building Challenge Red List. They have a list of 16 chemicals that they will not allow in a building. Hmm. And so every product's been certified not to have those. Uh, so the indoor air quality in that building yeah. is phenomenal. And we walk through yeah. there, you're going to see it's going to be perfectly daylit, uh -huh. and there's not a light bulb on. That's amazing. And I, I have so much to say. Biomimicry comes yes, to mind. Yes, right? Like, yes. we are nature. Nature is us. And, and uh, I mean, wow, where to start? So, thank well, you. Biomimicry, you yeah. know, really, if you go trace it back to the Greek, it means to use nature as a model. To use nature right? as a model. So, if you do things, like for me, solar is the only answer. How do we, how does nature create its energy? It's, it's through the sunlight. Right. You know, it's through the sun. It's 97,000 miles, million miles away, however many takes three minutes to get here right and and you know we don't have any any nuclear waste or anything do we need to improve the industry absolutely does it need to be more efficient absolutely does you know can we get it more cost effective again absolutely but to us that's that's biomimicry right uh, you know we have a septic system that's that's designed around what's called a constructed wetland where we have built a wetland and put wetland plants, we bring the black septic water in there, the microorganisms at the root zones of the plants eat our waste for nourishment, and when it's all done, and we put it back in the ground, swimming pool quality water. Swimming pool quality water from, from nature. black septic. Not, not oh, filtering, not no, using electricity. Nothing, nothing, zero. Black septic it's called. Right. Now, and we're talking about a bunch of microbes, specific microbes and that, that, plants. That, if you ask any biologist yeah. how nature cleans its water right it's by the swamps and wetlands on the planet swamps and wetlands and that's why they're so important that's right. why we don't want to destroy them right they clean our water yes so that's using again using nature as a model and again we we plant a lot of wherever we disturb we plant all natural um mm -hmm. uh native new jersey plants and shrubs and we help you know, groundwater recharge because of the deep root zones and it opens up the soil. Groundwater recharge. Can you explain to the viewers what that is? Sure. So basically what we want is we want every drop of water that falls here to stay here and go back down into the ground, okay. back to the aquifer. You know, the more you pave, the more you put hardscape, it all flows off. You get flooding, mm. downstream erosion, a, a, a list of problems. Yeah, massive problem in cities, right. whether, so whether it's LA or New York. Which is where we have our little athletic thing. Yeah. That grass, after you mow it for two years, is as impervious as a gravel driveway. It does not allow for groundwater recharge. Right. These plants have a thousand times more surface area, and their roots go down, you know, a foot to three feet. They open the soil up, so when it rains here, 
This water stays here. That's amazing. So we're talking about grass, which you would think would be a good you thing. You would think. You would think grass would be, oh, there, there's grass, there's a grassy field that's as impervious as concrete or asphalt. No, not concrete or uh, asphalt. What would you say? A, 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 a gravel driveway. A gravel after you driveway. Mow it for two years. After you mow it for two right. years. So, yes, if you let it grow yeah. and you're, you know, you're not constantly on it, 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 it does do some recharge. Okay. But this does, this does much, much more. Thousands of times more surface yeah. area, deeper into the ground. Yeah. Um, that's amazing. And, and so this building, I mean, I wonder if you would compare the health of the air in this building to the average United States indoor air quality, uh, the, the average air quality of the average person in the United States, they're in, in, in their house, you know? I mean. All I can tell you is that we've looked at every one of these materials through a microscope, whether it's the wood, the hardware, and everything, Look lights, at this. the way we do everything here. Mm -hmm. And there's, it, it's unmatched anywhere. And again, as you walk around here, there's not a light bulb on. And, and so if, if we take a look here, Mark, this, not only do we have the natural skylight, which I, in all my schools, every, all three of them I taught, and I've gotten full spectrum Verilux lights donated. Thank you, Verilux, because they mimic, you know, the sun at high noon, which isn't ideal because you want it to, of course, have, you know, fluctuate with the, with the rhythms, the uh, bi uh, diurnal, biurnal, uh, circadian rhythms. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the paint, in addition to this natural light, as Henry Ford knows, maximizes cognition mm -hmm. and, and health. That's why he has such large windows in his factories. Mm -hmm. This paint color also reverberates the light in here, right? It's, it's like the ideal... It's been, all, it's been all engineered together. Yeah. Right? So we'll take a walk in here. Beautiful. So a living building has to be totally electric. No combustion allowed. Okay. So you're looking at the state-of-the-art electric commercial kitchen that feeds 300 people. And if you look at the thickness of our walls, some people say, well, how, how did you get to be net positive energy, right? So we produce, this building actually produces 80,000 AC kilowatt hours per year more than it uses. Can you explain that number and give us a reference point? Well, the 80, whole building, for yeah. example, uses about 130,000 kilowatt 130 hours. 130 kilowatt hours. Right. And so we are producing... 80. 80. <laughs> and so we, we send that back to the rest of our campus to lower our electric bill. The reason we can do that is because the walls are 18 inches thick, the roof is 18 inches thick, and it is filled with recycled newspaper cellulose insulation. So we have an R60 roof, an R40 wall, and you're standing on a completely insulated slab of R20 insulation underneath the concrete. So once we start the heat up in the winter, the building stays warm, and uh -huh. same with the air conditioning. So if you look at energy usage in buildings, it, it's measured using a, a measurement, and I may be wrong by the way the letters are, but it's yeah. KBTUs per square foot. Okay. It's total energy per square foot. Okay. So a normal building built to the building code, 120 to 140 KBTUs per square foot. Okay. A lead building, a high performance building, 50 to 60. Okay. This building without the commercial kitchen is 15. <laughs> With the kitchen is 21. Whew. Unheard of. So uh, our, in, in the nation, in the in, nation, in the nation, maybe yeah. even the uh, who, who knows, knows right? right. This, but at uh, least uh, in the United States, this is one of the most efficient buildings in the country. And the R factor refers to the heat capacity. No, it, it the, refers to the insulating capacity. Ah, okay, right. insulating capacity. Okay. So we were able by spending extra money on our insulation to save more money by reducing the uh, amount of air conditioning and heat systems in the building. So you put a little extra money in and right. you save. Same with skylights, for example. Right. You know, you put extra money for skylights you and have them you all, reduce and yeah. you reduce the number of light fixtures. Right. You reduce the number of light fixtures, you can further reduce the air conditioning because light fixtures create heat. So you see, all these things have reciprocal relationships with because each other. Because light fixtures create heat. Although yeah. it's such a minute amount, it's actually probably right. not more. It's, it's, it's heat. It's, it's all part of the it's, big yeah, equation. Yeah. Huh. And so this is our dining room. Uh, we have, um, again, the commercial kitchen there. Everyone sits here, all grades. We uh, stress table manners, you know, good food. It's all organic. We have a garden. We produce all our own, you know, vegetables and mm -hmm. salad stuff. And um, again, it's all part of the, the lesson. Right. So, you know, and then this, which is one of the heart of our building here, this is a teaching kitchen. Oh, wow. So we use uh, Alice Waters Edible Schoolyard Project out in Berkeley, California as a model. And, you know, basically we take social studies as the integrator. What time period are you studying in social studies? Okay. 
and then what did they eat? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to cook that. Right. So the math teacher comes in and, you know, age appropriate, calculations, the science of food, the science teacher comes in. We've already done the social studies in language arts. You're writing the perfect paragraph about what you're doing. In art, you're drawing the plants. Music, you're singing. So you see it's totally integrated, all connected. Uh, it, it reminds me of Apple. And when you see an Apple store, it's just beautiful, you know, mm -hmm. you know strive to be, and it you know, talks to your identity, your why, all that good stuff. And then you see the Microsoft store now mimicking that open space, which mm -hmm. is a good thing. But I think about in education, I think about in general, when you have that gold standard, this LEED certified platinum, amazing living organism buildings mm -hmm. with the curriculum and the teachers that go along with it. I think about people sort of strive for that. Okay, let's quote collaborate, mm -hmm. or let's let, let's let's make it let's make a garden. But they can't integrate it. They can't. It, it's just it's this. It's almost like trying to take B12 without or, or vitamin D as a pill as opposed to getting it from the sun. Well, they they try to the, compartmentalize. It's, it's, not, it's not anyone's fault. We right. Have not been. We've educated everybody in silos. Right. Look at how I mean, kindergarten and first grade. Fine, you start. Everything's connected. Right. And by the time you get to college, you're you're so siloed. No wonder you don't think everything's connected. Right. We right. have to break those silos down in education. That that's part of the that's yeah. part of the transformation of, of what we want to do. And so how do you, how do you do that in a in like right like what's something that's well, a teacher is, uh, the teaching kitchen is a perfect yeah. example. Right. It integrates what you need. You take frameworks whether it's sustainability, ethics, cooking, and the, you allow all subject matter to come around that. As I, I think I explained to you, the yeah. good news about teaching soft skills and social emotional skills, it's not an extra course. Hmm. You teach it every day in your own course. There are examples, whether you're in athletics, music, science, language arts, math, social studies, of areas where you can teach communication skills, listening skills, collaboration skills, interpersonal relationships as students talk to each other. Mm -hmm. it, it happens every day. Right. And the, the trick, obviously, is to, to find it and to, and to, to talk about it and, and understand how to do that. Wonderful. Shall we walk out this way? Yeah, let's do it. And so what inspired you to make this school? You know, well, I mean, I see obviously you're very passionate and, you know, well-informed and you, you, you're able to like, I, I again think of Henry Ford, you know, gather the experts around you and sort of like a conductor, like, you know, direct them and see how they can make the vision come to life, you know? Right, so in the beginning, beginning, you know, I had um, uh, three, three young children and two boys ready to come into uh, into elementary school and, and my uh, wife at the time and I were looking around and there's a lot of excellent schools around our neighborhood but you know we wanted a school uh, that 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 really focused on communication and language that incredibly focused on demonstrating and mentoring what does it look like to have an ethical relationship with another human being ethics which no one wanted to really touch hmm. because it's you know it's it, it gets into a lot of sensitive areas right and we wanted a place that combined the joy of learning with academic excellence so we couldn't find a combination of all those and so my my wife looked at me and said mark we either have to move or build a school and i said geez well, I, I guess we better move because i don't think we should start building a school <laughs> right. well p.s we ended up uh, building a school and then we really you know the light bulbs kept going off i mean you know, listen I, i'm a product of the 70s you know we had a revolution back then you know, we wanted to change the world. And, you know, we made three big mistakes. First, we targeted my parents. That <laughs> didn't work. Second, we wanted everything to happen tomorrow. I was out there, you know, demonstrating I yeah. want to change tomorrow. That's like me. I feel right. like, I, and then I meet with more failure because I give up after well, like feeling exhausted. Listen, you can't correct the problem that took 30 years to create in a year. Ah, right, right. Sorry. Right. It's going to take a decade. Protracted struggle. This is a generational change if you want real change. Right. Right. And then the third mistake we made, we had this imp imp incredible agenda. We thought we knew what was right, hmm. right? So what happened? We got the 80s. Nothing happened. I mean, there were some things that happened. Right, right. I, I mean, you. we had some great work around civil rights, w women's rights, and, and, you know, there was a great conversation. But did we, ch I mean, look where we are right now, right. Right? right? And so how do we get that real intentional change? It's through education. And that's why I've become so passionate about it. And I was just blessed to be asked by Governor Christie to be on the State Board of Education six years ago, where now we can make some, you know, really start, you know, doing some great work in New Jersey, and we are. The, the, the educators in New Jersey mm -hmm. are phenomenal. We have a great state. We're, you know, we're like top in education in the country. Uh, do we have our issues? We absolutely do, mm -hmm. and, and, and we, we have to work on them. Yeah, and, and thank you for doing your service and the work you do, because, you know, it's, it's truly is 
long term, you know, little changes, which make the massive changes uh, uh, so, sort of mindset. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to speak to the fact that I talk a lot of young people and I obviously teach middle school, but you know, I, I talk to other people my age, younger, 20s, 30s, and a lot of them don't want to go into education because of what they perceive as the lack of pay. Mm-hmm. And then you have the pension system and, you know, how beneficial will that really be? And, you know, the, the sort of young mindset of I want this now. Mm-hmm. So I'm always thinking, hey, how can I live a better life with the current teacher's salary? But in addition to that, how can I inspire others to join? Because because, you know, the funding comes from tuition or state aid or federal funding or a combination, depending on the type of school. But, you know, there's a brain drain in education, I think, mm-hmm. you know, unlike other countries. So how can we you know, attract the brightest and the best to go into education? And I sort of want to stay in the classroom forever. But I feel like the only way, reason or way that I can get, you know, have enough money to, you know, do what I want to do is become an administrator. You know, right. so I feel like that's an important question to ask. And I want to see what you're advice and thoughts on that are. well you know school funding the pension program these are two huge issues right now in everybody's mind in New Jersey and um, un- unfortunately our board has nothing to do with either of those that's mm-hmm. really a legislative uh, uh, situation our assemblymen or assemblywomen and our senators are working on it right now right so Let's um, take a break I just want to get a picture of this right here this is the Green Building Council LEAD Platinum uh, LEAD, Le- LEAD, LEAD stands for Leadership and Energy Efficiency and Design or is it leadership and energy, energy and environmental design? Environmental design. Yeah. Okay. So this is our, our this is an old barn that we we salvaged. Wow, this is completely salvaged. Yeah, everything in this except that. the floor is uh, salvaged stuff. The walls, salvaged. The, ceiling, the, the yeah. first loop of the recycle, reuse right. <laughs> before exactly. doing anything exactly. else. So wow. well, yeah, so this is uh, this is a space we use for uh, for art, design, um, for uh, theater, for music. Uh, it's a gathering space. Yeah. And then there's some classrooms and everything in here. And this is the building that... Uh, this was built in 2007. Okay. It was the first lead platinum building in New Jersey. And I think uh, like 14th or 15th in the, in the country at the time. Okay. Wow. And, and so for those people, in, you know, those leaderships, those, those, uh, those leaders in any sort of environment where they have the capacity to potentially build new things, whether they're a builder or, you know, they sit on the town hall or they're an administrator, why should they look into the initial upfront investment in lead energy buildings? Well, because it is more substantial upfront, right? Well, it isn't actually. It so, isn't. Okay. No, that's, a, that's, a, that's a myth. Okay. Um, and so when we built that building in 2003, we were pioneers. Mm-hmm. No one had really done it before. And yes, that building costs probably 30% more than a... Uh, a traditional building built 